gang. I'm Todd here. We're taking a look at episode two of Good Omens. Uh, this is an interesting episode. Uh, there's actually two stories going on. Uh, one is the modern day where they're still trying to figure out the mystery and the other half has to deal with the biblical story of Job. Let's get to the mystery one first. Asherfell uh, goes over to Maggie's shop because he hears Gabriel singing a song. Gabriel doesn't know what the song is. So he goes over to Maggie and he sings it to her. Oh! And she starts crying. Well, it turns out the song is just making her think of Mina and how, or I'm sorry, Nina, and how they are not getting along how she's in love with her, but he's not in love with Maggie, and uh, and he's sympathetic, but but she identifies the songs Every Day by Buddy Holly. And she has a ton of them, because every time she sends a group of records to this specific pub, after a while, they send them all back, because somehow they've all morphed into Buddy Holly's Every Day. Kind of reminds me of the book Good Omens, where every music, uh, where every disc, CD, or cassette that is in Crowley's car eventually morphs into Queen's greatest hits. And so, whatever you see Crowley driving, most of the time he'll be listening to Queen. Anyway, he takes the record back to the shop where. Uh, Michael and Uriel show up demanding to know what he knows about Gabriel. They see Gabriel, who everybody calls Jim now, but they don't recognize him because of the miracle. And they want to know what the miracle was that Azurfell obviously did because everything points to the shop. He's the only one in the shop except for Jim, and who knows what that Jim is. And looking down at the record, he comes up with the thought that, oh, well, he performed it for love because Maggie is in love with Nina, but Nina is in love with her, so he did a miracle for them to both be in love. Well, that sounds plausible, but they're going to check on this. So, Crowley's contacted by um, Shaq. Yeah, Skax, about how uh, they too detected uh, the miracle at the bookshop. They believe Azrafel is involved, and that if Crowley doesn't want to be hunted down and destroyed by hell, he's going to have to go and investigate and see if uh, Gabriel's there. So, he goes to the shop where Azafel tells him about his visit with Michael and Euro and how they now have to figure out how to bring Nina and Maggie together. Uh, Crowley says, well, why don't we just have them get caught in a sudden rainstorm and then when they're all wet and under an awning and looking at each other, they're in love. No, that never works. I know. You remember Jane Austen? And Carly's like, oh yeah, she was awesome. We did it everywhere. He's like, no, 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 she was a writer. She was? Anyway, <laughs> he uh, comes up with the idea of doing a cotillion ball because that's where everybody falls in love with in a Jane Austen novel. The reaction Crowley has when he's at the bookstore and sees the Jane Austen collection and he starts flipping through it is just hilarious. Huh. Never knew. <laughs> anyway, but the real thing is the reason he wanted to talk to Crowley was he explains about the record and there's an address on it at the pub. So he's going to take Crowley's car to go to the pub and Crowley will stay in the shop and look after Gabriel. Crowley's not too thrilled with that idea. Now we get to Job. 
Azraphel is preparing to destroy all of Job's goats. Or, I'm sorry, the crawler is preparing to destroy all of Job's goats. Azraphel shows up, demands he stop, and then Crowley shows him that he actually has a permit to do this, which he shows to Crowley and explains about the bet, where if, if you know your scripture, Satan bet God that he could make Job denounce God. And God said no, he couldn't, so he made a bet, and the devil can do whatever he likes to Job as long as he doesn't kill Job. So, Crowley is sent to destroy everything, including Job's children. This horrifies Asherfell, and he goes and checks with heaven. Yes, that's where he's going to go, but don't worry. If Job passes the test, he'll get twice as much as he had before. Twice as many goats, twice as many children. Well, the original children, no, he won't get those back. They'll be dead. Well, now it's a Conscience, you know, oh God, what is that stupid word? Uh, crisis of faith. Why would God do this? So, he goes down, sees Crawley's at work. When he notices all the uh, birds in the area are bleeding like sheep. Crawley didn't kill the sheep, turned them into birds. Crawley goes to the children, turns them into lizards. And then he and Azraphel wait out the huge storm that's going to destroy the house and bring it down on top of the children, although they're all now in the basement. And Azraphel is horrified to see that Crowley's drinking human wine. Well, he, he, he can't do that, but he is tempted by the uh, shank of lamb. And he tries one bite, and he just devours the whole thing. Thus, we get our thing of how previous season. Crowley was always drinking. Asheville was always eating. Um, the next day, uh, they see Job talking to God. Oh, guess who's playing Job? Peter Davison, a Doctor Who character. And, or er, uh, actor. And ironically, in the modern day, Gabriel is dressed like Sylvester McCoy's doctor. It's a weird thing. I don't know if uh, that was intentional or not, but some would say, no, no, he's dressed like Peter Davidson, but he has a tie. Davidson didn't wear a tie. And the sweater he's wearing is striped crosswise. Davidson's wasn't. Davidson's was wearing a cricket uniform sweater. Completely different. Anyway, and they see God talking to Job, and then Job returns home, and he doesn't understand what God was saying to him. When Gabriel, Michael, Uriel, and some other angels show up and tell him he passed the test, and everything is going to be okay. He's going to get twice as much as everything he had. So he'll get six children instead of the three they used to have. Oh, they're children. They're, they're, they're dead. Sorry. But you'll get six in replacement. At this point, uh, Azraphel ascertains Gabriel is the only one who's ever seen procreation besides Azraphel. But he's only seen Eve's conception. Eve was made from a rib. So he and Crawley <laughs> play a con where Crawley pretends to be in a midwife and he's going to help them make their children. So he has Job and his wife stand across from each other and that she will reach in and pull three ribs out of his chest, which they don't turn out to be real ribs, I don't think. But, you know, Azraphel sets that up. And then they'll hug, and boom! Three children that look just like the three children they had. And there, there's almost a moment where it all seems to be going to be coming out when 
Job thinks keeps saying, no, no, these, these are my children. This is the, my son so and so. And it's like, but she convinces this, this is Job convinces him that no, 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 no. He's like, oh yes, you're right. No, they just look similar. And uh, when Gabriel is a little suspicious, he asks Azrapal if those are the old children. Azrapal pauses and then blurts out, nope, nope, they're new. Oh, okay. Why didn't you say so? And now Azrapal's out of crossroads. And when Crowley comes up to him, he believes Crowley's there to take him to hell because he's now a fallen angel because he lied. And he worked against God's will. Azrafel's like, well, or uh, Crowley's like, well, I'm not going to tell anyone if you don't. And thus, this is how their relationship kind of solidifies. Very interesting episode. The uh, fact that, uh, sorry, nose itches. The fact that they have Azrafel questioning God's judgment is very interesting because that's what Crowley got Crowley in trouble and why he's now a demon. But the whole thing about Job is kind of a, uh, that's a prickly uh, problem. God killed Job's children. He gave him more after he proved faithful, but you know that, that's something to wrap your head around that, that he allowed Satan to do that. And you can go either way on that. I mean, oh no, he God isn't this uh, great omnipotent being. He's very cruel. But on the other hand, looking at it from this show, if God is omnipotent, then he knew Crowley and Azrafel were going to save Job's children, and that would have been what he would have wanted. Uh, it, yeah, it, it, it's hard to wrap your head around just exactly what the intention was, and I think that's <laughs> intentional because it allows the character growth of Azrafel that we see at the end of and why he's always going against heaven's wishes following his own conscience as a Crowley put it you follow God as far as you can so uh, leave all your nasty comments about how I'm uh, reading this the wrong way and how terrible person I am and I'll uh, see you next time. Uh, please hit like, share, and subscribe.